In the week that it has been announced that Swindon's Abbey Road Stadium will be demolished and replaced by a state-of-the-art stadium, and we see the evidence that the new Bellevue Stadium is to be a reality, it becomes apparent that a week in Speedway, like in politics, is a long old time. This becomes all the more real when you consider these facts. Same two teams, same riding order, same track, but two very different results. Yes, Birmingham have announced their arrival on the National League scene and beat Cradley in a last heat decider and had this broadcaster jumping up and down in joy like a teenager. If this is what the National League has to offer, then bring it on. Also in this long, short week, news that brings all of this into perspective as we hear of Ivan Major's continuing battle against illness and Kenneth Hansen reveals that he has testicular cancer, only then to get the all clear. All of our thoughts and prayers and wishes go out to them and their families and it's news like this that makes you realise that Speedway is a family so I once again say, only in Speedway. studio and I can see uh, three smiling faces and one not so smiley. <laughs> uh, we got in the studio today, we've got Chris Webby. Good evening. We have got Joseph. Hi. And we've got Matt. Good evening. And myself, GA. Um, yeah. What a difference a week makes, eh? Just a bit. <laughs> did we? Uh, did you enjoy the match yesterday? It was a, it was a cracker, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? Really it was uh, to get the... After last week's sort of non-event, really, both in terms of performance for the Brummies and racing, which wasn't particularly good, I think last night had it all. So. It certainly did, yeah. That Heat 12 being the... the <coughs> Super I think that's. I think that actually won the match for us yeah. in the end. Um, Joseph, did you enjoy the match? I've got to say, it's probably one of the best matches I've been to in a long time. Well, if that's the uh, fair that the National League has got to offer, then... Well, no complaints from me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. so um, pleasantly surprised by the quality as well. To be honest, so yeah, yeah. I think the so perception a lot of people have had with the National League is that it's all wobbling round. But uh, last night was anything but. So. I, I think the reason that you get that perception is because when you see um, National League riders riding in a higher league, they're trying that little bit harder. They're going perhaps that little bit faster than they used to, and yeah. they maybe do wobble a bit, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> uh, so, but no, the, the entertainment was, uh, and, and um, some of the times were, were some of the times were quick, yeah, pretty so. quick. So, um, yeah. Okay, so well, we've got a lot to talk about um, this uh, this week. We've obviously uh, sad news uh, about you know Ivan Major's continuing battle against that form of Alzheimer's that yeah. he's got, and. Um, uh, I have some great memories of Ivan Major, uh, some not so great, <laughs> um, but he, he knew what he was about, didn't he? he, he, he yeah, in Speedway World, he raised the bar, didn't he? Yeah, so absolutely. The professionalism, yeah. uh, as much as anything else. Yeah, so maybe, maybe he wasn't the most popular person when he was riding, but I think end. if he was in your team, 
he was yeah. popular. <laughs> that, well, I, I seem to remember him saying once, I went into Speedway to be world champion, not to be popular. Mm, mm. Which is, you know, so, pro- perhaps, perhaps so the I think attitude. Everybody, I think everybody sends the best wishes uh, to yeah. Ivan and, and his family. So. Absolutely. Uh, he was a gentleman as well. Um, people don't, you know, realise that about the, th- the, th- the opening night... Um, he was actually standing next to me on the first corner and he just came over and just started chatting to me and I'm standing there shaking in my boots because I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to Ivan Major um, but he was he was uh, he had a lot of that sort of anecdotes about the old well of course pe- he was paper. standing next to my dad when dad uh, got the uh, tapes at the start so of course he was yeah yeah of so. course, Dad can say now that he's, he's been at the touch with Ivan Major and broke the touch <laughs> first. Yeah, so. yeah and uh, yeah, we'll have a, have a and quick. And also, Ivan Major, because I stood next to. Well, there is that, yeah. and, and we we should. Um, uh, poor old Brian's having a bit of trouble with his water he's works at the moment. Water works, so, yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, well, shall we clarify that? Or? <laughs> nah, <laughs> let's leave it. <laughs> Yeah, because Brian was meant to be with us um, maybe next week. Maybe, maybe next, next week. week. Okay. Talking of next week, and before we we go into the nitty gritty of uh, some of the uh, goings on yesterday, and, and, and listen to some of the um, uh, the interviews that we have uh, next week's a bit of a special uh, day for us on Sports Radio because there isn't a match on the Wednesday, so we, it was like, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about that uh, T-shirt that we've got in the corner of the room. Mm-hmm. Which has got uh, it's a white T-shirt. It's got the Craigley logo on it. It's got the Birmingham logo on it. And underneath each of the uh, logos, it's signed by every member of the team, including the number eight and uh, Will Pottinger and Graham Drury. Um, so we're going to auction it. And, it, the and if you want to see a picture of it, it's on the on our Facebook page. Yeah. So we're going to auction that off. Uh, I think it's a good sort of memento of that mm. historic meeting mm. and uh, the all proceeds are going to go to uh, you aren't they? I don't know, they sorry, are, the, yeah, ben, the, ben, the Ben Fund. Oh, that's right, yeah. I thought, so, you know, I changed my name. Yeah, well, to Ben. Ben Fund. Ben, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all going to go to the Ben Fund. Um, so, we've already had a bid on we've it. We've had an opening bid of £25, so, which is great, and that's come from Wendy. Well done, Wendy. So, oh, you know no. what you're looking at, but... I don't, we don't want we don't want it to go for that, do we? Not, no, and, uh, we, no. So we think we can get a bit higher than that. It's, uh, might bid on it myself. Okay, so shall we have a little talk about um, Wolverhampton? Why not? <laughs> Why, Why not? not? Since you're here, <laughs> uh, it was their opening meeting, the Olympic. Um, I understand it didn't start off as a great meeting, but got better. Yeah, fair the, first, the first eight heats were a bit like watching paint dry, to be honest. But uh, once the track started to settle down, we saw some pretty good racing. We saw some good passing on the out, especially on the outside line, which has been lacking at Monmore Green, I think, in recent seasons. And a well-deserving winner in uh, in the bomber, bomber Harris, with a with a very good performance, dropping just the one point. I understand the last was it uh, not the last race but one of the ra- his last race was it where he came from third to first on the last bend is that right? right it was a, it was really basically a decided between him and Sam Masters mm. who I've got to say was very very impressive, um, and uh, considered that he was a late call up into the meeting as well. Um, so yeah, good performance by uh, by the bomber and I think uh, certainly looks like he's uh, admittedly it wasn't the strongest feel but mm. it certainly looks like he might be coming into the season in in pretty good form. Because he normally starts off quite slow, doesn't he? He does, so. yes, but he does normally do well at one more green, so... Yeah. Uh, we've had a comment up on the shout box. Stingle said that some of the ri- the Wolves riders looked off the pace. Um, I thought Ricky Wiles looked OK. He's got, he got um, 10 points. He got points. He got, he got point. Well, he got points. That's, that's a good start. He got yeah. points. Uh, Freddie Linger, I think, was, was a maybe a bit of a disappointment he didn't really look on the pace he won his opening ride and he won his last ride didn't really do a lot in there in between Peter Carlson faded as the meeting went on a little bit he had a good start winning his first two races uh, Jakob Torsell who of course was rider of the season last season was solid 10 points not really spectacular but uh, Lewis Blackbird I thought did quite well he had a good a couple of good uh, rides early on mm-hmm. in the meeting including a race win uh, Josh Bates struggled a little bit, still looks a little bit wild <laughs> going into some of the corners, but uh, hopefully a season will be able to help him settle down. And Tobias me a well, his first competitive meeting at Monmore Green, and uh, he, he was he was getting into 
He was making good starts, but just you know, maybe that little bit of lack of track knowledge mm. really helped him back a little bit. And uh, I think he'll he'll need a little bit of time to settle down. I think you know, people just need to be patient with him. But uh, there were there were glimpses of potential, I think, from what I saw of him. So. And I understand um, that the there's been a few. I don't know what the word is really. Rumbles about the uh, admission price they're charging at all for mm, this year. Eighteen pounds. To be fair, it's been frozen seventeen for the last three, four seasons. Mm. Um, and obviously, I guess they couldn't keep freezing it indefinitely. Um, but I, I, I think, I mean, I, I thought seventeen was was, was pushing it to be mm. honest. So to push it up to eighteen, I think. And in fairness, and what's that compared to other, like, you know, uh, elite clubs? About the same. Is it mm, about right, the same? Okay. So. Do you think the Elite League's pricing itself out? Because mm. it wasn't a great crowd, was it? It was a poor crowd. It was mm. a real, I mean, like I said to you earlier, five, five, six years ago, you'd have had more there for the present practice. Mm. Um, and it's probably the poorest crowd I've seen for an opening night to, at Monmore Green in all the years I've been going there, which is 25. So, um, yes, it wasn't probably wasn't the best of fields. It was a very cold night as well, in fairness. So uh, yeah. maybe there were mitigating circumstances, and it'll be interesting for Monday's match against Coventry to see what the crowd's like for mm-hmm. that. I would imagine it's Coventry would bring it. was a, like a, a football sort of, um, mm. admission now, isn't it? It is now, yeah. A uh, championship. Or yeah. Particularly, um, I suppose, it's a it's bank holiday. That's, it, that's not a bank holiday this Monday, is it? It's the next Monday. Next yeah. 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 So yeah. that's yeah. going to be interesting to see what the crowd's like. Coventry always bring a few down to, to more green anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we've got them tomorrow night. At and they'll probably so. fancy their chances <laughs> this year. I think they'll fancy their chances. They've got a team that's of riders who will do well at more mm. green, mm. but... You'd like to think Wolves will be able to make a, a good start to the season. Got an interesting comment from Dingle, which um, uh, I'd like to read to everybody. I went to Ivan's farewell meeting at Bellevue, aged eight, waiting by the changing room for autographs. John Cook came out wearing just a towel, which Ooh. didn't stay on. Never recovered from that. Oh, <laughs> dear me. We have noticed. <laughs> not nice. No, yeah, yeah, not nice. So, I, well... Kind of feels a bit doom and gloom. <laughs> I'm not doom and gloom. It's a bit early for that, but mm. uh, I think uh, that was that was a bit of a surprise. And I've got to say as well, um, <coughs> the uh, the program to have about twenty printing errors in it not really not really good enough. That's not great, is no, it? I think it's you know surely it's not asking too much for somebody to proof check the program first before it goes to the printers. But, but, uh, <laughs> well, no, that was a, that was a, that was a disappointment, and I think. Uh, you know, first impressions are always important, aren't they? And mm, if newcomers absolutely. go out there and they say that there's a lot of errors in the program. It's and a lot of spaces in the crowd. <laughs> how much do you think that that was down to the fact that you've lost Ty Waffenden this year, and how much was that down to, down to the price, or maybe the field wasn't the best? I think there's a combination of all three. I'm not so sure the uh, missing Ty Waffenden is the is a major factor, to be honest, because mm. uh, the crowds were dropping last season when he was in the team. So. Right. Although admittedly he wasn't performing as, uh, as you would expect a world champion to do so, but hey ho. Okay. <laughs> well, we've got uh, we're following a few matches on uh, um, the the internet tonight, so just sort of keep you up to date with those at the moment. Sheffield versus Scunthorpe. It's twenty seventh to Sheffield and seventeenth to Scunthorpe. Um, Alice Perks is riding for Scunthorpe tonight. Um, just to sort of give a a flavour of you know what we saw last night, and uh, he's scored two points from two rides at the moment. Uh, Kingsland versus Paul, of course, is uh, currently eight four to Kingsland. There's been a few argy barges, people being excluded, and so on. And there's only three heats being run so far. So, uh, elite league. There you go. Red car versus Workington, and the score there is has disappeared. Uh, that's that's good. Oh, it's uh, sixteen twenty-three. Whoa, sixteen to red car and twenty-three to Workington after six heats. That's not great, is it? <laughs> wow, I thought we was bad last week. And there's uh, the Bob Kilby Memorial uh, at Swindon, and currently the leaders in that are. Uh, Hans Anderson's had two rides unbeaten. Uh, Justin Sedgman has had uh, beat Chris Harris. Mm-hmm. Uh, has had a, had a win. Uh, Troy Batchelor only one ride uh, uh, with a win. Freddie Lindgren one ride with a win. Um, so, Bjarni Pedersen's had a last. 
No comment. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, we're hoping um, at some point uh, if it, uh, is, is to get Paul, our Cradley uh, fan, on because uh, I'd love to hear his perspective because on, on the meeting last night because he was probably more um, positive about the Brummies than I was last week <laughs> which was a, a weird situation and he's sort of been proven wrong uh, proven right, I beg your pardon mm-hmm. uh, he's probably not happy that he's been proven right but um, so I hope that hopefully we'll be getting poor on yeah, pretty I'll try soon I've just realised what a miracle that is what the what? What's that? You you've just uh, managed to not call them the rent boys. <laughs> I'm, working, ah, yeah, I'm, working it. I'm working on you it. I'm working on it. Last week though, to be yeah. fair. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I might I might disappear for a minute because uh, my computer's just disappeared on me. So uh, no, okay. everything yeah everything's just gone ah, right, on, it, okay. so on it. We'll, on. We will try to. Give um, me a couple of so yeah, okay. Let's talk about last night's match. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my computer's turning itself off. Oh, well done. Yeah, he did that the other day. <laughs> I blame Bill Gates. <laughs> I blame you. Oh, um, okay. So, okay, so if anybody else can get the updates up uh, for those matches, that would be great. Uh, so we can keep our eye on those. Uh, Ellis Perks, this is from Dingle, put, will put six to seven points on his average this year. It's superb talent. He certainly is a superb talent, mm. and it's um, nice to see good English talent coming up like that. Um Good West Midlands English talent, actually. <laughs> it, you know, let's be honest about it. Um, shouldn't be on a three point average, though, should he? I mean, everybody knew that he wasn't, you know, he was that, that good as, as he's turned out to be. So, why is he on it? Something wrong, isn't there? What do we think? Well, there is something wrong, but I think we've said that about Spade right? quite a lot over the years, haven't we? And there's mm. something wrong. Um, but. Uh, the end of the day, I mean, there's no rules being broken in getting him on, on a three-point average, but I can understand why people would say it's not really in the in the spirit of competition. But at the end of the day, Crowley want to win the league. I shouldn't be that bothered. About yeah, the, um, the I suppose we all had the same chance to sign him. Uh, I know, um, as we'll hear later, Phil Morris has uh, gone on record as saying he tried really hard to get him. Mm. Um, but there is a connection with the Perks family in Cradley isn't there mm-hmm. so it's perhaps not surprising interestingly again a talented English rider who's learned his trade in Australia yes yeah so a lot like Todd Wuffington did so I think if he, is, if he achieves us what Todd Wuffington has done then yeah, well what, does, what is that saying <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. true true uh, okay, well, let's talk about last night's match, which had yeah. absolutely everything. Okay. Um, can I, oh, can I ask, ask a question to, of course to you people can. who were there, mm. you, all three of you? What do you think the win was down to, being it's the same team? Well, having your number one r- riding like a number mm. one. Um, Why wasn't he riding like a number one? Previously? Uh, you'd have to ask him that. I mean, okay. that, I mean we are, let, let, come I'm on. I'm asking we're, you. <coughs> well, we are... I think you just have to put it down to the bad day in the office. That's I, I think. It's I think he that. blamed it on his bike setup. I think that's what he said. I think you're so, thinking about Sam Chapman. Was oh yeah, that, that was talking it. Talking about that last week, chasing setups. Um, I mean, you know, he had a couple of. He had some bad luck last week. Mm. You know, he had some um, exclusions that, personally, I think could have gone another way. Um, I've, I've seen um, as a sort of neutral mass. I've seen on the uh, BSF and a few other places that there are there's the odd Cradley fan, and I've got to be honest, I found the Cradley fans have taken the defeat with far better grace than I was expecting. And there are a um, few odd ones. Yeah, yeah, and you know have been quite generous in in in, in their praise. Of course, they won the trophy, so I suppose you can. They. Um, which you know, which is great. Um, you were standing where I was, mate. So. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I upset a few people. I think you did. Yes, we'll, 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 we'll talk I about. I think you'll lose any sleep over it, but uh, uh, no. <laughs> sure. um, I wonder, I'm just thinking here what I can do for next week. Now, anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, where was I going with that? I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. There were did so there, there's Wyatt been a few. There's been a few comments about that we were lucky. Birmingham were lucky. And yeah, we did did get some luck, but I think it actually evened itself out. You make your own luck. Well, well, you do, yeah. Day, but so. I think I think it evened itself out. Um, there was an exclusion that shouldn't have been for us, Sam Chapman. 
um, which um, you'll hear Phil Morris has got something to say about uh, on his interview in a bit. Um, Wojtanek, that exclusion, was that the right decision? Personally, I think it probably was. Yes, but, but well, it was difficult to see from where I was. But, uh, Phil Morris has got a different opinion on that. <laughs> which again we'll hear in his interview uh, in a moment. Personally I agree with that <coughs> that we did get lucky but not not this week. It was ba- it was last week and it was a lot of bad luck. Well yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we had bad luck last week. We had bad riding. I don't think yeah. it's um, you know that's uh, uh, you can't I have, to, I have uh, to say I've never known of a team being unlucky to win a match. No. <laughs> uh yeah. So um and the other thing was, I, I, th- I think uh, Adam Kirby, who bounces well, by the way, <laughs> as we found out last night, I think at least one of those, and I probably would say both of those, the guy up the inside of him should have been excluded. Um, Maybe so, yes. You know, um, but I, don't, I don't think there was anything lucky about Birmingham's win last night. No, I but thought, uh, I, I, I think it evened itself out. I think there was yeah. luck on both sides, and I think it evened itself out. A jingle says, don't go on the BSF. Because there are far too many idiots on there, but the crazy fans on various Facebook groups didn't take too well to losing. Had great fun with them. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I suppose they're not used to. It. I mean, I think we're the fir- is it the first match they've lost for three years. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I heard it's, somebody yeah, say something yeah. like that, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. At yeah. home, anyway. Um, yeah. So we used, to, we used to have great fun in Dudley Wood when we saw them lose at home so yeah. back in the back in the nineties. So. Well, I, and I noticed that um, I'm going to talk about your dad now. He, uh, he he's put a couple of posts on on uh, the BSF about there's been uh, he his words or paraphrasing his words um, a bit of sniping going on between the two sets of fans. I actually don't think that's a bad thing. No, I don't think it is. I no. think that actually gives a bit of flavour and that helps yeah. put bums on seats. And it makes know. a charge because it's normally Coventry and Paul fans snapping each other on the base, isn't it? So. Yeah, yeah. Well, less said about it, better, <laughs> I think. Um, so, okay, actually, on to the match itself. I mean, I I approached the match with some trepidation, I have to say, and, and my, my only thoughts was, please let us do better than last week. You know, that that was all I was after really yeah. from the meeting. And we'd already achieved that after he won. Mm. <laughs> and didn't Al- didn't um, Adam Ellis look absolutely I fantastic? Tend, well, I mean, I saw Adam Ellis a couple of times last season mm. when running in the Elite League for Lakeside. Mm. And uh, I think you'll probably see that a fair few times, you know, where I'm quite happy to he'll see he'll that. Domin- he'll be a dominant number one. He'll dominate races for fun. We've uh, we've needed that. And uh, it's always a big boost when yeah, your number one goes out and wins the, the first heat. I think it settles mm. everybody down in the team. Yeah, well, I think I think you're right, and we, we something we've missed for the past two, three seasons. Really, we've certainly just, we missed it last season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, if you've got a number one that's going to go out and win heats, you, you you know if you keep that match close, heats thirteen and fifteen are going to win it for you. That's right. So uh, which was exactly what happened. Always, for, as, as the meeting went on last night, I always felt that thirteen and fifteen were going to be good heats for Birmingham because you were Ellis looked. Exceptionally quick, mm. and also Tom Perry did. So mm. I thought going into, um, into those two heats, the Birmingham were possibly going to be maybe have the edge a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. to get a five-one in, at least one of them, and maybe both of them. And I think once the five-one was in the <coughs> once you got the one, first five-one, five then it was yeah. Exa- yeah. I, I I totally agree with you on that. Um, <laughs> and it's it was also good in that heat fifteen to see a bit of team riding. Mm, uh, right. yeah, Dying art. So. Yeah, because Adam Ellis definitely st- stayed back behind and let Tom go and, and, and sort of shepherd him. No, I don't think actually t- Tom probably needed the shepherd. Probably not. But you know, uh, it looks good and it's it, it, you know for the team spirit and everything. So, I mean, just had everything. I mean, we went ahead by six points fairly early in the match, and then sl- then slowly, cradly pulled it back, and then they got a, a lead of six points. Yeah. And then we pulled it back. What, what mm. a match! And last heat decider. Yeah. You know, if that doesn't put bums on seats, then nothing will. <laughs> so. And it was a good crowd. You said uh, it was a great crowd. Yeah. Well, I don't. It, was, I don't, it wasn't as big as the, the previous crowd. Mm. It never was going to be. Mm. Um, but you know, I, I was pleasantly surprised at how big it was. I was also pleasantly surprised at. I think Cradley probably outnumbered us. I think that was always going to be the case, given the results of the week before. Mm-hmm. But I don't they outnumbered us by anywhere near as much as I was fearing. Mm. 
Do you think many, many, many Brummies fans stayed away fearing uh, another heavy defeat? Um, if I was playing, be paying good mm. money to watch Speedway after seeing the week before, you'd have gone in. I'd have. No, I probably would have, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, but I think I it think would have more, cro- probably more seen mind. the same team the week after as well. In, mm. in, in yeah, yeah. So, mm. I, mean, I mean, you know, you, you, it wasn't from a Birmingham point of view. The last week's match, it was just a nightmare to live through. Really, mm. I mean, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted to have come back and witnessed that again. But yeah. you, you were saying to me, didn't you? Like halfway through the match, you even gave up, like filling out your program, didn't that, you? No, I never do that, do I? <laughs> but I did. I, I well, didn't see much point really. That was the football. Well, filled it all in last night. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Um, but you know we started off well and then they pulled us back we, you can see the way the team is set up where the weaknesses in the team are um, and uh, Harvey Banks is it, Har- is it Harley? Harvey Banks Harvey yes. Banks yeah I've got to feel a little bit sorry for him I mean he's a three point rider in the middle of the uh, of the team that's a tough yeah. tough thing I mean he's obviously not going to st- stop there because when the new averages come out he does look the weak link in the mm, team at the moment mm, though doesn't he so um, but he, he's sort of been let out to the dogs a little bit where he is yeah. isn't he it's, but you know other than that it's just the, the fight it's the fight in the team that's the thing it's the fight um, there's a lot of fights we have somebody on the uh, oh is this uh Oh no, I've lost, lost him. him. Okay, yeah. I think that might have been Paul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll try Paul's going to I'll come in. Um, so, and then that Heat Twelve, which for me was what won us the match. To be honest, that Super heat Duper, 12. according mm. to Brummy Tylord. Oh, the, the, it's probably one of the best heats I've seen since two thousand and seven. Since mm. so, because it was uh, Sam Chapman holding them off, holding them off, one up the inside, mm. one up the outside, and then. Uh, and remember, it was Adam Ellis was was not Adam Ellis, the Ellis Perks. Too many Adams and too many Ellises in that match yeah. last night. <laughs> um, and then he got past him. And then he said, "Well, I'm not having that." So he got past, so, so Chapman got. I think Adam twice they passed. Very each mature other, ride of Sam Chapman, I thought. Very much right, so very mature ride. Yeah, I, I thought so because he, yeah, he didn't panic. And actually, in the interview that we, that uh, Joseph conducted for us, he actually talks about what he learned last week and, and that he used in, in that so it's quite an interesting uh, insight into the thinking of a speedway rider actually so I'll tell you what why don't we um, have a listen to that Sam Chapman interview um, while we, we can see if we can get Paul back up then we're here with Sam Chapman now and uh, I expect you're happy with your improved form th- this evening yeah I'm, uh, I'm happy come the end I wasn't too happy mid, mid meeting I was uh, I almost felt like I was letting the boys down a little bit. I was leading my first ride. I uh, got a bit of lift in the second to last corner and, and, and dropped the position. Um, and, and then mid-meeting, I, I had a bit of a lull. I, I was on my first bike and I was struggling a bit. So uh, rather than mess around and chase setups, I, I just switched bikes, tried to get my head into gear like, um, and just came out, came out singing in my last race. So hopefully we can, we can follow that on into to our next few meetings here. And uh, I'm sure everyone would love to know what the story is for uh, Heats Ever when you got the exclusion oh what was that about <laughs> whose fault was that I think they had a Cradley boss in there or something like swaying the swaying the ref the story is that the ref um, put me off a 50 excluded me and made me go off for 15 because he apparently warned me for twitching on the line in a uh, earlier on in the race but it comes out that actually he was he, he warned my teammate Harvey Banks um, so we did actually put our 50 quid up thank you to, to Phil Morris for putting his hand in his pocket and um, we put a protest before. in obviously the results did, weren't changed but he, he has admitted I think he admitted defeat that, that he hadn't warned me so I did get a warning for it but um, I should have obviously in that race incident had a warning still been allowed off the start line to win the race obviously and that heat 12, wow, what, what a heat that was with uh, Ellis Perks. You really weren't giving up on that one. Nah, you? hopefully everyone enjoyed that one as much as I did. I, um, I kind of learnt last week, uh, I had a good race with Nathan in one of my races last week, and I switched mid-race. I was riding around the outside in the dirt, and I switched mid-race back to the inside and just lost tons of ground on him. So I, um, I just stuck it out there and carried on. Every time he came under me, I would just 
not bother cutting back, just keep running it wide. And in the final, I think he almost got half a bike length in front of me mid-track, and then uh, I managed just to hold it, pull it round, and just miss the fence to win the race. So it was it was exciting. And so now, bring on the league. Yeah, hey, like I'm not a big one for reading internet stories because I know it can alter your form, but. Um, I've heard lots of people saying, oh, they're saying this, they're saying that, they're saying this, but I'm not going to get involved in that one. We'll just take each meeting as it comes, and hopefully tonight we've proved that. Um, I did actually read a comment saying that oh, Birmingham are probably going to be bottom of the league. Well, uh, hopefully that, that proves that one wrong. But obviously we've got to get to away tracks yet, so we see how all the boys cope with the away tracks, and we'll see how we get on at Stoke on Sunday. I was going to say, how do you ride Stoke? Um, listen, I've not done too good there before, but that's not to worry. I couldn't ride last time I went there. I ended up under the fence twice, but... Um, hopefully we'll put that behind me and I'm a much better rider now going there than I was six months ago so. OK so that, that, I think that's quite an interesting sort of insight into how these riders think about things and what, what happened last week and what didn't work last mm. week and I'm not going to do mm. that you know particularly mm. that, that I'm, I'm sticking around the outside and the way that worked I thought that was um, quite a mature thinking mm-hmm. uh, to be honest and uh, I was very very impressed I think he could be one of the riders that um, you know may, helps us to achieve something. Hopefully, I thought yeah, the referee sure. was a little bit fussy last night in some of the decisions. To mm. be honest, mm. I mean that's that's probably the one thing that did spoil it a little bit. There were far too many delays and and restarts. In the meeting, there was, um, <coughs> but there was. But act- the other side of that actually um, is I, I've sort of heard uh, a few sort of rumblings on the terraces and so on about oh you know they'll they'll make it close tonight just to it'll be to put on the show you know and and um, you know nobody really cares well I tell you what I don't think young Rod's <coughs> would do that though no I don't think honest. they would I don't think Phil Morris would be part of that <laughs> either to be honest um, but you could tell from you know the twitching at the, at the tapes and stuff it was important. Uh, you know, bragging rights at Perry Bar last night was it, it was important for it the was, riders, yes, yeah, so. and you could tell. And yeah, I'm sure Adam Kirby. <laughs> um, we, we're, we're now going to rename the first Ben Kirby corner. By the way, we decided last night. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure he knows that uh, there was no quarter being given last night. Um, he was a bit unlucky, to, I think. So I'm guessing the real meeting is going to be pretty juicy. You know, when, when, in the when league, the, yeah, yeah. I think it is. I think yeah. th- the thing is that we've now shown Cradley that we can beat them on their track. On our mm. track, how does that yeah. work? Yeah, <coughs> um, our track, the track, <laughs> tracky. But of course, they've also shown us they can slaughter us as well. So <laughs> <coughs> you know, it, it, it's, it works both ways. Okay. Uh, it is going to be a very tasty. And I noticed that the one meeting between us hasn't been arranged yet. There's only the, the I think it's, the, I'm not sure, I think it's their meeting, their home meeting has been arranged with us, but our home meeting hasn't yet. Mm-hmm. And it might be interesting if that's left towards the end of the season and it turns out to be a, a decider, yeah. wouldn't it? That'd be, uh, There's one thing I can tell you about that. Mm-hmm. It'll be a poo bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. Oh, bless him. So I've I've got um, all the stuff back up again, so I'll be able to tell you some of the scores in a minute. By the way, yeah. so it's miraculously appeared on my computer without me doing uh, anything. Dingle said, "Matt, uh, thank you, Dad, for getting the book back to me, even though it caused him so much trouble." Okay, I don't know what that means. But I, don't know I do because I'm the one that actually got it back to him. Oh, so right, about okay. thanking me. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't naughty. Book. Wasn't that no, it wasn't. I got that book, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the uh, score at Sheffield is thirty nine twenty three, and Alice Perks only had uh, scored two points. He's had a, a two zero and a four exclusion. Uh, so that's David has only scored two points. Two points from two rides. He was poor on Monday in mm. the in the Olympic as well. So mm. Kingsland versus Paul is twelve eleven to Kingsland. Paul Stark's had a couple of points, and Adam Ellis has had a win and a four. Uh, okay. And Red Car versus Workington is it'll uh, miraculously appear sixteen twenty three. So that's Stuart Robson's had a nasty crash and has been withdrawn from the meeting. So that's a shame. And the Bob Kilby Memorial. Who's your money on for this one? Who's going to win this? 
putting you on the spot. You don't know who's in there, do you? <laughs> I'm trying to think, actually. Uh, um, we've got Lewis Rose, Josh, Ro- Josh Grashnash, yeah. Scott Nichols, Freddie Lindgren, Hans Anderson, Charles Wright, Max Frick, Nick Morris, Chris Harris, Brady Kurtz, Bjarni Pedersen, Justin Sedgman, Steve Warros, Sam Simota, Sam Masters and Troy Batchelor. Mm. Hans Anderson. Okay, well, he's currently had uh, two wins from two rides, as has Freddie Lindgren. Well, that's good. So. Mm. Of course, the last Bob Kill will be meeting to be stage when. Uh, so, yeah, Tabby so, Road, yeah. So, yeah. Course, uh, so. That's, uh, we heard the news this week that that's going to be demolished by the end of this year. Oh. And a new track built for them to ride in next year. Is that a bit optimistic? Who knows? Yeah. I I know. Uh, speaking of new tracks, I'm <coughs> quite interested in, in the whole Bellevue thing. You know, the well, they've started. They've, moved stopped, on, they've started you know, work. All of a sudden, yeah. They, they, they've why? started. I mean, it was proposed a few years ago. I don't know. It's it's a council thing, isn't it? And yeah. they don't move and quickly. And is it going to be a national stadium? Is that the plan? It or is, is it just going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I think that depends on which promoter you talk to. From the information that I've received, yeah. That was all. That's perhaps the, um, not for broadcast. Yeah. But uh, no, it'll be. Uh, I mean, the picture, we've seen the pictures of it and the artist's impressions of the new stadium, and it just looks like it's going to be. Does uh, look like it's going to be a decent. Same with. Um, we haven't seen any pictures of the new Swindon, but apparently we're told it's going to be. You know, certainly it's going to be an improvement <coughs> on, on Blunsdon, which is a. Yeah, it needs it's, a, it's still a good track, but it's it's a, certainly as a, as a the stadium. stadium. It's not. Uh, yeah. uh, not does anybody else think that maybe it's in the wrong place? Well, it should be in national, <laughs> national Stadium. Why shouldn't it be more accessible? <clears throat> okay, let me see. What can I say about this? Manchester's mm. a hugely ambitious city, though, for mm. things like this, aren't they? So. My understanding is that part of the, the reasoning behind it being called the National Stadium, and they had to have permission off the BSPA for it, was that they said, look, if we can call it the National Stadium, we'll get it. If we can't call it the National Stadium, mm. we won't get it. Yeah. Um... So they said, okay, so you can call it the National Stadium. Then, um, so, so it could, be, could it end up being called being the National Stadium just by name, or mm. but name? I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's a positive thing because it, it will be, it's a it's there for Speedway, isn't it? I mean, there's other things there, but it's for mm. a, a Speedway is such a big part of... It wouldn't wouldn't usually surprise me if once it's up and running, Bellevue have a team in the National League as well as the Elite mm. League, because yeah. they'll have access to the... So stadium, it will be a sta- so, it will yeah. be a stadium where riders can go and ride and train and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. How much that's going to be a benefit to Bellevue, and how much that's going to be a benefit to Speedway as a whole, mm. I don't know, and I wouldn't like to mm. make any guesses on that. But that's the worry, isn't yeah. it? You know, mm. that's the worry. Yeah, good shape by uh, Dingle. Leicester should have been the national stadium, but they messed up royally. Yes, they have, unfortunately. Yeah, what is the story behind that track? Why is it so? I mean, I've never seen it, so I've never been there. So well, I've only been I've only been there once, and in my opinion, it's too narrow, and the the straight and the bends there is no banking on there. Right. So you get out the start, you ride around the first corner. Of course, there's the no inside. banking at Perry Bar to speak of. Yeah, but it's yeah. completely flat at at uh, that right. lake side. Mm. The, the the bends are too tight, and the straights are too for. I suppose that's off. the difference with mm. um, Perry Bar is that the, so, they're very wide. It's such a shame because it's a great little venue, mm. but they, they just can't get the track right. Are they going to try and try and get it right, or I don't think or Jason yeah. D- Doyle minds it. At I the don't moment. think at the moment no, because <laughs> he uh, yeah. he's just become the Elite League Riders Champion, yeah, yeah. Um, which is mm. yeah, and it's positive as well for for Glasgow. Obviously, a lot of Glasgow, work being done yeah. On there. I mean, t- t- put us up to date with that for people that don't know. A million pound investment in mm. in the club and the stadium. That's just dream seen the pictures it? of it, and it's. I mean, it was a bit. It was always a bit, bit of a ramshackle place, mm. Ashfield, mm. but it's certainly looking pretty um, swish yeah. now. So could that be the beginning? Of, see that that's what you need, isn't it? You need people with. Yeah, that's it's it's a dirty word, but you need people with money. What's it, he going to get a million pound though? I mean, what, what's, what, what can well, you do refurbishing to... Well, they're refurbishing the whole... Share it with, well, yeah. obviously they share it with the, uh, with the football club as well. Right, OK. Um, so, but I think it'll be the, the Spiro club will get the priority over the football club, which is oh, a big that's thing. Good. That's good. Um, so, the, you know, let's not forget the last couple of years, Glasgow 
there's been a couple of occasions when they've been very very close to going out of business yeah so and again as we've seen with Birmingham doesn't it, if it's a big city you know and it can't support a speedway club then there's a problem mm. but yes mm. that's fantastic that's great it's uh, uh, Rooney's fortnightly wage <laughs> <laughs> Says it all, doesn't it, yeah, really? It does. It does. Says it all. Yeah. Okay, so. Then we went to Ashfield last year, bombing it would have improved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that old joke, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, where was it? It was, uh, it was, it's sad to say it now, but they had that, um, went through the centre of uh, Newport, wasn't there? There was a, like a, a hurricane type, lots of wind, wasn't mm, a hurricane? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 lots of wind, thing, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> words, I Joseph, that a thing. Oh, no. um, <coughs> and some what some wise person quoted it on the, uh, the BSF that uh, you know it went through the centre of the track and caused fifty thousand pounds worth of improvements. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing when the new Glasgow opens, they won't be asking Phil Morris to open it anyway. So. Uh, no, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. He's not. Uh... And speaking of Phil Morris, should we have? Yes, let's have a yes. Let's do. Um, the yeah, Phil let's was talking. That link was. Yeah, it was pretty good. So yeah. Phil was talking last night. We asked him about you know um, the Heat Seven incident, and he had his own views. Also, he got some views on whether Zach Voitnik should have been excluded. Have a listen to this. So we're uh, with Phil now, and uh, what's the story with Heat Seven? Heat 7, uh, that was when they excluded uh, Sam Chapman for, for his second warning when he only had one warning. Uh, he didn't have a warning, sorry. It was Harvey Banks that had the warning. So um, I, as soon as the race was on, I was speaking to the ref saying, don't announce the result. So as soon as he, a result is announced, it's not changeable in the rules. So I was trying to convince him not to announce the result. And uh, if it came to it, I would put in an official protest. I said I needed to look at the videos. Um, but they decided to give the result out. Then they looked at the videos and realised that he made a mistake, that it was the wrong rider, he got a mistaken identity. Um, so I did officially protest. And, uh, my wallet's a lot emptier at the moment, let's just say, and it's been taken off. I don't think anything can be done, but it's just I want to let people know that I was on the ball and this the referee right made the mistake, the that, and that could have made the difference between winning and losing. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was just a case of... Uh, the ref made a mistake, which he's admitted, and uh, that's probably the end of it now. But if that had been a league match and it could have been the difference between making the playoffs or not, it could have been a big boo-boo. So um, yeah, the ref looked at the looked at the video, admitted his fault, but um, once the, re- the race was given the result, he couldn't change it. So um, that was the story there. So I'm sure you're really disappointed with the result of that heat then. What do you think it would have uh, the outcome would have been if he if it hadn't turned out like that? Um, well, it's not so much. I I think it, it, it's, they had a few bad bits of bad luck. We had a few bits of bad luck. I think it evens itself out. I think Zach being excluded was really really harsh. And uh, I went out and I was looking at the, the actual racing lines. And Luke Harris was definitely trying to protect his line by sort of coming across and stopping Zach. But Zach was already there and Zach was on the actual racing line. So. Uh, I thought that was a real tough call on Zach. And, uh, but let's not talk about them things. And I think it's better to talk about you know, the final score and, and the win for Birmingham after last week. Um, that's the perfect result, isn't it? Great racing and uh, it's going to fill them full of confidence now, hopefully going into the league meetings. Yeah, I, I was watching the live updates last week and I was as gutted and mortified as anyone looking at the, as they were coming in. And I really was sick to the pit of my stomach because my name is on this team and uh, sort of you know that's been made known now when they did bad people made it known that oh it's not that good you know even <laughs> but hey I spoke to them all this morning this morning this afternoon this evening whenever when we had a track walk and I tried to sort of get through to them that you know I believed in them that's why I got them involved in this team and uh, if you look at your opposing rider they could all beat their opposing rider um, I'm sure that there's not going to be many teams that come with a better well there won't be any teams that come with a better reserve than Alice Perk so you know you're taking out the equation and uh, yeah it would have been a lot different I think so Ellis Perks is exceptionally good. I, I, I hold my hand up and say I was trying my hardest to get him to come to Birmingham. Um, obviously, saw a lot of other teams were, but I think with the team we got, you know, I think Zach 
is going to get better and better. You know, he's um, once he got in front in that heat two, you know, he's, he's, he's good. And, and and all the way down the team, you know, the points that Adam Kirby scored, you know, the point that, that you know the the lads, which is probably a bit disappointed tonight, you know, Harvey and Alex, you know, their points they scored made a difference. Mm-hmm. So. Um, it's obviously great that Tom and uh, Adam did so well at the top of the chart, and you know Adam getting a maximum looking obviously a different rider to what he did last week. Just a bit. Um, apart from heat 15, where I think he was sort of you know helping Tom a little bit. The other four, he was sort of streets ahead and looked an elite league rider rather than a national league sure. rider, and I think that's what he will do in the future, hopefully. So, yes, yeah, uh, great night for Birmingham to to win it. I think obviously he didn't win it over the two legs, which is. You know, I think we'll take the win in one leg. That's um, that's good enough, I think. Absolutely, it's it's uh, cradly. <laughs> That'll do for me. Um, so you'll be starting your new job uh, soon. Are you looking forward to it? When does that happen? Well, the actual job officially starts at the first Grand Prix, but I have been working extremely hard over the winter with um, writing rule books and. Uh, you know, doing seminars and doing work manuals, so I, I've been heavily involved in that, and uh, so it's, it's been a lot of hard work. But I've really enjoyed it, and I am looking forward to Warsaw now in sort of four weeks' time, three or four weeks' time. Well, good luck with the new job, and don't be a stranger, around Perry. I'll see you next Friday, anyway. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Two one. There we go. So um, he's got a totally different view um, to us, to, to Matt, uh, us because we spoke about it before uh, on the. Uh, uh, Zach Wojtunik exclusion. Um, Apologies got, for leaving yes, the mic. Yes, got it. Yes, um, somebody needs to get the sack. away. I'll swear at you in a minute. You know, you do I had that to go again. for wee wee. I left the mics. Uh, mics. I'm sorry. Can't get the staff, can you? He can't. He cannot get the staff. What I have to work with. I know. Yeah. No. So you, but you, you don't agree, do you? You think that the decision, the right decision, was made? Well, it was difficult for me to say because I was, I was at the. Other end of the stadium, mm-hmm. so not not the best angle to see, but um, it's uh, certainly to me it looked like it was the right decision. Mm, I, I've got to be honest. I mean, I was slightly closer than, than you yeah. were. I'm not, I actually agree. I think it probably there was nothing malicious in it. I don't no, no, think, no, you know, so. it was just it was a racing incident, and, and that's it. But yeah, I think probably at the end of the day, it was probably, you know, sorry, Phil, but. <laughs> um, but there was something about that incident that I didn't enjoy, um, which was that uh, when Zach came round, uh, bear in mind that his 16-year-old learning his trade, etc., there were, uh, and we're, you know, it's only a few, I mean, let's, let's not tire everybody with the same brush or all that, but there were a couple of Craigley fans, maybe four or five, six, that sort of number of Craigley fans booing him, and I thought that was not needed, really. But not surprising you know. also. Mm-hmm. If you ask me, <coughs> maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I do. I, 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 well, I, I thought it was. A, I, 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 I could have. There's another rider I could have booed last night, but I didn't. So that's the uh, one part of football we're hoping to stay without, isn't it? Yeah, though? yeah. I mean, particularly as we're talking about, you know, guys that are learning the trade and will make mistakes. But that's me anyway. Um, well, we also had a chat with uh, our uh, esteemed leader, Tom Perry, um, and we was chatting to him about um, the pressure uh, of going into Heat 13 and uh, Heat 15. So we're just uh, with Tom here, and um, did you feel the pressure when you went into Heat 15? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, there's going to be pressure. We, we needed a 5-1, um, but we, me and Adam uh, came together strong, you know, and came out with the 5-1. So, uh, how did it feel when you crossed the tapes and knew that you'd won it for Birmingham? Yeah, it was a really good feeling. Um, I'm, I knew last week was just a blip. Um, obviously, all the lads, uh, I, I knew we had a quite a strong team. Like, Cradley are going to be one of the best teams in the league. If not, they are, you know. Um, so, to, to beat them uh, tonight was uh, really good. And as you just said, you thought uh, last week was just a blip. Uh, did did like was there any practice or anything that really helped you personally get well, through? Well, the, these meetings, like they are just they are just practice meetings. That, it's safe to say, like they n- n- call them nothing meetings, but it's not to the league. So we're all just trying to get the right setups and everyone dialed in. So it's, it's been good for the team, and as you can see, it's a lot different this week to last week. Just one question for you: Did Alan tell you off for taking his maximum? I think? No, no, <laughs> he, he was happy that we just got a five-one. 
I you had to butt I, in at the end. Yeah, I had to end, ask that question because because yeah. yeah, because Adam was obviously on a, on a full maximum uh, at that point. And I thought oh, I bet he was a bit slightly miffed. But actually, saying that that he probably wasn't because what he did he he shepherded Tom around. Tom probably didn't need shepherding around, but you know t- it was good to see that team spirit and that bit of um, mm-hmm. uh, team riding and so on. So that was that was. Uh, Quite pleased, really. Yeah. Uh, it was a great meeting. What can I say? Um, well, his attitude, you know, referring it to a, you know, that it wasn't a non-meeting. No. You know, it was oh, like, it certainly wasn't yeah, a yeah. non-meeting. The, the, you know, the, <laughs> there's uh, look, these two teams are sharing the same track, and it's bragging rights, isn't it? And it's important. Mm-hmm. It's just important. It's important for us as fans, and it must be important t- uh, for you as a rider uh, to have that, those sort of bragging rights. Um, it's listen. I, I was thinking about this last night actually, because I couldn't sleep last night because I was buzzing. Yeah. yeah, I just I was just buzzing last night. It was That's just the drugs kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you get <laughs> that magazine out again? <laughs> 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 yeah. It's that. Uh, Oi. <laughs> oh, he knows where yours are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, he cleans your room. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's that sanatogen kind of kicking. That's where it was. Um, this is what sports about. Yeah, I've as, as some of you know. I've I've had a, a bit of a rough time lately. Um, oh, violins are going to come out now. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, no. And last last week was a bit a bit of a rough week for me um, for one reason and another. But my life, I did not feel great last night. Ain't, ain't, that, ain't that what sport is all Absolutely about? So. You know, that you know that's why we do it. That's why we go, and that's why sport is important it is absolutely important because there is nothing in this world that gives you that feeling of putting one over your rivals and your team mm. you know and you know and I've said this before that team Birmingham Speedway it does not belong to Tony Mole god bless him it doesn't belong to Graham Drury it doesn't belong to Phil Morris the team belongs to the supporters that's who it belongs to because without the supporters, there would be no team. It's just, you know, to me, it's as simple as that. And without our passion and without all of those things, there just wouldn't be a team. And that's why sport is so good. And also, that's why you need the moments of defeat. That's why you need all of that as well because without you're trying to tell me it's good for you to lose. Yeah. Well, it is because it makes the highs <laughs> so much more. Meaningful yeah, and it, better. It, oh, remember that. If you win every single time, <laughs> yeah, you're a blue I, I, I agree with you because yeah, if you win every single time, it just starts to be the same thing over and over again, and you'll just get yeah, bored yeah. of it and you'll just stop. And stop which is also watching. why last night's result, yeah. I maintain, was the one of the best results Cradley Heath Speedway have had since they joined the National League. Possibly, so, yeah. Yeah. so it was good for the cl- it was good for the club. Were you saying? Well, you think about what's going to happen next time Birmingham and Cradley meet. Mm. Mm. You know, I mean, they're going to be up for it because they know they can beat us. Yeah. We're going to be up for it because we know we can beat them. The atmosphere is going to be absolutely. You know, it's it can also start. I mean, as in football, you can start sort of like a, uh, the collie wobbles a bit of a ripple effect. Like now, we are unbeatable. Yeah, we're not unbeatable. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I, I wonder yeah. where you was that going from. That carries on to the next meeting. I think. Are yeah. we allowed to teams, say teams Colin Wobbles? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, this is just it's, this is important stuff. It's great stuff, and uh, thanks to the riders for um, a fantastic night. Yeah, from both sets. I mean, and that was that you could tell from both sets of riders. This was important. Mm. I don't care whether they say it's a nothing meeting. They wanted to win. Both teams wanted to win that. Um, it's just a shame we couldn't start again and say that was the first leg and do the second leg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, no, I it greatly, so. Right, we'll have a look on the scores on the doors. Sheffield forty six, Scunthorpe twenty eight, uh, Kings Lynn versus Paul, which of course is for the Elite Shield. In that the scores are twenty six twenty one uh, to Kings Lynn, so that's fairly obviously Paul going to uh, retain that trophy. Uh, Red Car versus Workington. I really feel sorry for Red Car. Let's see if it's got any better. Marginally twenty thirty one. Red Car twenty. Workington thirty one. 
and the Bob Kilby Memorial Meeting gets they've, got, they've possibly got big problems at Ritko with the with the crowds and mm. other things that they have struggled in the last few seasons. Mm. So it'd be a shame as well because you know it's not not too long since they were reformed. Okay, so. it's definitely it looks shaping up to, to be a head to head between Lindgren and Hans Andersen because they've all three rides apiece, three wins apiece. Okay, we've so, got five minutes left of, of the show. Mm-hmm. We need to we need to talk about next. Week's show. And yes, we, need, we, need, we need, also need to talk about a prediction for the score at Stoke on Sunday. Ooh, wow, that's uh, that'll be difficult. Um, okay, well, we've already got one prediction uh, from Dingle on that one. It says forty fifty and very dusty. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not right actually. Uh, no, I, I always remember Stoke has been quite a, quite a well watered track and a, quite a nice tra- track to ride. So I don't know. I th- I'd be happy with 40 50, to say the least. <laughs> uh, maybe he means 50 40. Because <laughs> uh, I. I pff, well, 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 I suppose we, we've got a head, bit of a head start on Stoke um, because we've had two meetings now and they haven't. But I imagine their riders have had rides in other places yep. uh, by now. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to matter. What do you reckon, Matt? Um. Wake up. <laughs> Keep you awake. Is that water? Yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, I'd say four point Birmingham win. I'd take that. Mm. That would that would prove to everybody that um, we're, we're, we're on the map in the National League and we're one of the teams to beat. It is quite we... ironic actually because Birmingham's first Premier League match was against Stoke, wasn't it? Yes, it was, which we won. And So maybe that's an omen. Mm-hmm. Let's hope oh, so. Well, I'm going to go with the flow and say Rummy's win as well. So okay. I'm going to go for a draw. There's that. Well, <laughs> sitting on the head. Sitting on the head. Well, but but also it makes the second leg nice as well, doesn't it? Uh, mm. On you know, so it's almost be the because it's a trophy we get. and We're going to get a cone. Whoever wins it, I think there's the M6 cone. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, so, um, so yeah, over the two legs, certainly a Brummy win, I, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I fancy Birmingham to beat Stoke over two legs. To be honest. Okay. Joseph, your Joseph? prediction. Well, I don't really know what's going to happen, but the definitely it's going to be a good match, at the very least. Well, let's hope so. Cause I like Stoke as a track, so I think. Um, Stoke have more water problems than Brian Book. <laughs> Not today they didn't. <laughs> okay. Watch out for the splinters, says Brummy Time Lord. Okay, yeah. Well, from the sounds of it, it's Stoke is still how I remember it, which is yeah, fairly run down. Nice track, but quite run down. And we'll see. We'll see. Okay, I, uh, before we finish. I'd just like a couple of things. Please, please, please tell anybody and everybody that we're, we are auctioning uh, this T-shirt um, on the show next week. Um, it really is something worth having. Um, so we'd like to get as much as we can for the Ben Fund, so the more people on preparing to make a bid for it, the better. Uh, can't confirm it yet, but there is um, a 50-50 chance that Tom Perry will be with us on the show mm-hmm. um, so hope for Nessa and I'd just like to read this from Kenneth Hansen that I've just uh, just received Kenneth Hansen has received good news from Danish doctors following his cancer scare this week writing on his fa- Facebook page he said just to let you all know that I've had a scan made and blood samples taken I have cysts which are harmless apart from being painful I need no further treatment at this moment in time but will have the cysts removed later this year and I will now resume all my duties with my Speedway teams I would like to thank every single one of you for your amazing support and love I am truly amazed at how big and how much love there is in the Speedway family Oh yeah, that's a great note to finish up. Wonderful night. Right? Oh, Take care, everyone. Good night. All opinions here today. Welcome to the